Following the Denver Nuggets winning an NBA championship, Phoenix signing Bradley Beal, and then the Lakers revamping their roster, everyone has kind of forgotten about the Memphis Grizzlies. But let's not fail to overlook them. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about Memphis last season. They were a great regular season team, putting up 51 wins, which is up in the top five of all teams from last season. And sure, they may have had a somewhat disappointing playoff exit, but not really how people think, considering it was at the hands of one of the best players of all time and most seasoned playoff player in the NBA in LeBron James. Not to mention the elite level defense Anthony Davis graced the court with, plus great minutes from the Lakers role players. And I guess what I'm getting at is, with the 23-year-old John Morant, 23-year-old Jaron Jackson Jr., and 25-year-old Desmond Bain, the Grizzlies are a solid team with a proven, young, talented core. I guess what I'm getting at is why are the Grizzlies being sent to the shadow realm by the media this offseason? <laughs> yeah, they didn't make a, a big move like Phoenix, they didn't win the NBA championship, and then, you know, they're not the Lakers. <laughs> the media loves the Lakers, <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, they are a lot better than kind of giving credit for. They had Steven Adams hurt last year during the playoffs. They, John Morant, he was hurt. And yeah, they won't have him for 25 games here to begin the year, but they got more than enough depth to even start out well without him. Desmond Baines looking great. They locked him up with a new contract. Jaron Jackson Jr. is looking terrific. Uh, I really don't understand either how people are just completely writing them off. I've heard people not even mention them in their top five in the West, and I think that's ridiculous. I think they're a lock to be a top four team, if not even top three. A lot of people are locking in the Lakers, and coming from a Laker fan, I don't think they're probably even going to be a top three seed. Given that, you know, LeBron and Anthony Davis, they're pretty much guaranteed to miss some time. Even if they don't get hurt, they're going to be on injury management or load management, whatever you want to call it. And they don't prioritize the regular season that much. Even with, you know, a younger team, that'll help. But maybe they'll be a top three seed. Maybe not. I think Memphis would actually be the better bet. And again, I think it's really weird that people are overlooking them, even from a regular season standpoint. Yeah, exactly. I mean, let's talk about this smart move, lol. A lot of people think that the Grizzlies gave up too much for Marcus Smart and should have maybe brought back Tyus Jones, maybe draft a wing with their pick in the in the draft, uh, draft a wing defender in this year's draft. But I'll tell you why I think bringing Marcus Smart in was a great move. He has always been on a successful team that in some way, shape or form has been a contender in the postseason. And I think having Marcus Smart being that vocal leader will be exactly what the Grizzlies need with their young core. And having that defensive intensity and leadership role in the locker room is what I think Memphis was looking for, especially after the whole Jaws situation. Not to mention, it kind of a kind of flew under the radar. I didn't even catch this right away, but picking up Derrick Rose, D Rose um, yep. as well. And I think that will help mentor Jaw a lot, especially in the locker room. Um, he kind of knows what it was like to be at the top, you know, a super high finisher around the rim, super athletic and, and kind of fall off for obviously two completely different reasons. You know, d -Rose got hurt and then Jaws kind of just finding it off the court. But I think that, yeah, I think Derrick Rose will help a lot in there. He kind of can relate a little bit. And I'm not sure we'll see Derrick Rose play much after Jaws suspension is up. But I think just having him as that voice of reason for Jaw will be will be great. Yep, fully agree with everything you said there. People, you know, again, aren't talking about them because they didn't make a big addition, but I don't think they needed to. What they really needed to do was find a better locker room guy, more stability on their team, and that's exactly what they did with Marcus Smart and Derrick Rose. I mean, especially at the guard position to where they're going to be around John Morant, whether it's defending him in practice, talking to him more, but that's going to be great from a mentorship standpoint or even a maturity standpoint for their team. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've already had a pretty successful team, but we forget that they're young. John Morant, he's what, 23, 24. Jaron Jackson, he's 23. Desmond Bain, I think he's 24, 25 at the top. And yep. all around, they have a very young team. They don't need to add some star player even another high level role player that badly i mean they got marcus smart that helps they're gonna have internal growth they're gonna get better just by developing and that alone can make them better they've already been really good again they just needed that stability more than anything in my opinion yeah exactly i mean looking at the major impact players for the grizzlies this coming year i mean they're gonna have desmond bain john morant jaron jackson jr stephen adams brandon clark who is severely underrated 
Marcus Smart, and don't forget about Luke Kennard. I mean, is this team better than Denver? You know, maybe not, maybe so. I mean, everyone's gonna have their own opinion. It always depends on how they mesh, but I think they'll certainly compete in the West and they're they're way underrated, they're way overlooked right now. This team's gonna be solid. And I think the main intentions for the Grizzlies this off season was to improve the off court situations. And I think they did that in the best ways possible. You know, bringing in the, letter, the veteran uh, leadership with D Rose and Marcus Smart, as well as that defensive specialist. I mean, it's going to transform this team completely on and off the court. Yeah, I mean, no matter where you look on their team, they got pretty much everything filled. They got great guard depth. Their wing depth is a little bit suspect, but I, I'm pretty high on Sire Williams. I he took a little bit of a fall last year, but he looked great during his rookie year. I think they can get him back up to speed. I'm a big Jake Laravia fan. I've loved David Roddy even before he got drafted. Uh, I like all three of them, and then they, of course, have Jaron Jackson Jr., Steven Adams, Brandon Clark. Hopefully, he'll return from injury sooner rather than later. He did tear his Achilles, um, but mm. yeah, tough, but they got good depth all over the all over the court, really, and Santi Aldama, too. Great three-point shooter. They got enough three-point shooting. Desmond Bain, Luke Kennard, Nuke Kennard, <laughs> how you mentioned there we before. Go. Yeah. Um, yeah, they got plenty of three-point shooting, too. Plenty of shot blocking. I, I love their team from an all-around all standpoint. Again, John Morant will be missing some time. That will affect them. Hopefully, it doesn't too much from an on-court chemistry standpoint, and I don't think it will. Their only new additions are Marcus Smart and Derrick Rose. Luke Kennard's kind of a new addition, given that they mm -hmm. brought him on at the trade deadline last year, but... I mean, they have, again, a really team that's been together for a little while. They can grow internally, and it won't take much for them to get that final push they need to make it even to the NBA Finals, potentially. No, yeah, exactly. You talk about how they have all this experience. I mean, they're so young. They have a lot of experience together. They have a lot of playoff experience together, beating teams and obviously winning and closing out series. And that was with, like like we talked about before, that was with hurt players, that was with kind of some drama. But I think they're young, they they add this great addition. Uh, the one thing that I would like to see them improve on um, is, is Jaron Jackson Jr. kind of needs to be in the game more. And oh, yeah. we, 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 we saw it kind of improve here and there, but for the most part, I mean, teams took advantage of that. And the, I mean, he just plays a little bit tougher style basketball. But he, he needs to be in the game. I mean, he's so good on defense. He needs to be in the basketball game as much as possible. And I think if they can kind of improve on that a little bit, that will help a lot too. And I think it will with Marcus Smart and his like his defensive IQ and his leadership. I think that's going to be a big like small factor that we're going to be looking at this year that I think is going to help like change this the, the trajectory of this team, I guess. Yeah, let's talk about defense here then. Um, Jaron Jackson Jr. teams routinely went at him to get in foul trouble. And as a Laker fan, I was really watching and pushing for the Lakers to do that in their round one matchup. And if I remember correctly, they didn't foul him out even one time. And they rarely even got him in foul trouble. They only did in one game, I think game four. But no, he took a big step forward in that regard. Um, if he can continue that, I mean, it'll be up and down throughout the regular season. But he obviously understands his importance of being on the court even if it means being a little bit less aggressive chasing uh shot blocking and whatever it might be he's maturing he's getting better from that standpoint he's a top three defender in the league undisputably i'd only put anthony davis and maybe bam out of bio ahead of him and you can mm -hmm. argue either way there but defensively yeah they got their rim protection and now they added their great point of attack defender in marcus smart and i think that alone will help take take a lot of pressure off Jaron Jackson too. Given that they don't have John Morant and Desmond Bain only pretty much funneling players to Jaron Jackson, they're all the guy actually competing out there and, and holding its ground at the point of attack in Marcus Smart. I think that'll be huge for them. No, I agree 100%. And, you know, like I said, it, it just comes with it. I think that the Marcus Smart trade was kind of overlooked. Like people think, you know, you think about the Celtics and, and that's kind of everyone's thinking about is the Celtics and how they, they lost Marcus Smart, but they got Porzingis, you know, yada, yada. But the Grizzlies played it great, honestly. And it's it's probably the best decision for them 
I think moving forward, again, I want to reiterate, I think that their like intentions this season were to help kind of increase that locker room energy, I guess, if you will, and, and just that guidance. And I think that they just nailed out of the part with Marcus Smart. Never would have saw it coming. Never would have guessed that would ever happen, um, especially because the Celtics have been doing so well with him. But yeah, I mean, great pickup for the Grizzlies. Uh, I think it's going to be awesome. I'm slowly turning into a Grizzlies fan, even though last year they kind of had a rough series with the T-Wolves, but that's besides the point. <laughs> um anyways i think it's gonna be great i'm excited to see how it plays out yeah i think they're gonna be a really fun team to watch again i mean they they always have been for the past couple of years here but i think this is the most like complete team they've had again a lot rides on john morant him coming back and being a more mature person overall but from a team perspective and only looking at the way their team is put together i like it more than any other team they put together around john morant and jaron jackson jr they got more mature leaders for their locker room. They got enough shot blocking, three-point shooting, everything all over the court, like I mentioned before. And all around, they, they kind of finally look like that team that could make that deep run in all aspects. And it, it's probably an underrated, if you would say that, team to like make an NBA Finals push. But it wouldn't even shock me if they clicked really quickly after John Moran came back this year and they made a deep playoff run. Uh, no one's expecting it, but it would not shock me at all.